Hey y'all, Coach Fight here on 8 17 2023. If you're watching this video after the fact, this video will contain information about the upcoming feast days. Uh, some Enoch calendar stuff in here. We'll be talking about how the Enoch calendar works, particularly um, this particular year when we have this 13th month. We're going to explain all of that using this here, so we'll get to all of that. Anyway, so let's get into this whole six month, fifth month deal here. I'm going to have to practice saying that. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll come to the scripture. This is uh, the first book ever written on our planet here you know whether you believe it's flat or not you know <laughs> this is the first writing that was written um down here in for or and by humans um this was written by enoch who we heard about in the book of genesis how he walked with angels and he was taught by those same angels well this is what he was taught praise our father in heaven he wrote it down and we have it here now where we can read how his calendar works particularly where it's talking about the 300 and 64th day now we've heard about this 364th day um we're finally praise our father in heaven starting to get an understanding of this how all of this works and we're not going to go all through all of this i'll scroll through it if you want to pause it and read it or you can look for some links below what we want to do is hear about this 364 days so we'll come up here to the beginning of the chapter which is, which is the beginning of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This is where we hear about the laws of the luminaries, the laws of the celestials, basically how they work. And like Genesis 1 and 14 says, um, this confirms that they're used as our father's timepiece. The only difference about Enoch is he's the wise guy who actually explains it all to us here in this book. But anyway, he's talking about months and we see down here in verse 9 that he goes on to start explaining how these months work but notice let me go ahead and read it. it says in the same manner it goes forth in the first month by the great gate so it's talking about months here but then it starts talking about gates but notice this is the fourth time we see the word month here in Enoch let's go to the fifth time it's all the way in the next chapter where it says every month at its exit and entrance, it becomes changed and its periods are as the periods of the sun. So when we go back to the chapter that we're talking about, it's not talking about months. It's talking about gates. And so he's going to explain how this celestial calendar works, how the sacred calendar works. I wanted to say how our father's calendar works, how that Genesis 1 and 14 calendar works by way of gates, not months. That's important to understand. Not months, but gates. Because when we look for the word gate, watch this. You're looking here at chapter 72 and you see how many times the word gate is used. Because that's how the sacred calendar works. It doesn't work on months, it works on gates. Like this. Here is a representation that we created on this channel for sundials. If you want to learn how to make a sundial out of an old satellite dish, praise our Father in heaven, you can check one of our other videos. Matter of fact, remind me, and I'll put a link right here. But what this is showing us is how these gates would look if we had a gnomon that was casting the sun's shadow correctly. What you would have, what Enoch was saying, is that the last day of the year is when the days and the nights are equal. See right there in verse 33, it says the year is precisely 364 days. Now, of course, this is the sacred year. This takes into consideration the solar year and the lunar year and the celestial year. The stars all play into this. And when you put all of those three calendars, all of those three celestials together, you end up with 364 days precisely precisely exactly but you have to put all three together you can't just say the sun has 365.25 because yeah it does absolutely and we learned that in enoch 2 we learned that in the second book of enoch but anyway this is the first book of enoch and what he's saying here starting back up there verse 32 he says at that period the night becomes shortened this is talking about the last day it is nine parts 
and at that night it is equal with the day so this is telling us that the days and the nights are equal this is the last day of the year when the days and the nights are equal this is very important to understand because when we get over to something like this we have to know exactly when to start the year march the 20th in the year 2023 it says 6 50 a.m so march the 20th would have been the last day of that sacred year but as a cute aside note notice that in 2024 it's uh 1244 so what Enoch was saying is that this is the last day of the year. The first day of the year will be the 21st of March in the year 2023. Of course, you have to look at the celestials and know when the equinox is. This is a representation of what you would see on your sundial. You see the shape of the satellite this year. You know, that's and because we have one out there in the yard, we'll show you a video where we made it and everything. When the sun gets in this portal right here. It's in the fourth gate over here, too. This whole thing is the fourth gate, but it's kind of going around in this direction. The shadow is going around in this direction. And when it gets here, it's at the last day of the year. And when it crosses this plane, we're at the beginning of the year. That would be March the 21st. And we start our clock. That's day one. And the sun will have 30 days to transverse this gate. Notice we didn't say month. That's the gate. Now, what has to happen? Is that you also have to have the representation of the moon when you have the sun in this gate and then you have a new moon you begin a new month but you have to have those two things in play so let's look over here at this year at the new moons and let's see what we're talking about we're here at fullmoonology.com looking in 2023 for the new moons and what we find is that there was a 0% moon on March the 21st at 1.23 a.m. So that 0% moon would have fell in the fourth gate. So that would have been the beginning of the year. And it was the head of the year there in March with the preparations for Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You remember they have to get cleaned up and everything. So that new moon would have fell somewhere about right there. And then when we look in April, we see April the 20th at 12, 12 on April 20th. So that would be some of the times right there. And you have to remember that's the 0% moon. So these moons would have fell even after that. The visualization and the confirmation would have come later. I mean, if this one is at 12 p.m., they would have seen the new moon the next day, the next uh, sunset, you know, to give it enough time to get to 1%. And then when we look down in May, we see that it was on May the 19th at 1153. So they would have also seen it the next day. So this one would be right here, right there on May 20th, right there on the line, right there on the gate. So is that the beginning of a new month? Because what we say, what the scripture says, what Enoch says is that you have to have the representation of all three, the sun, the moon, and the stars. This out here is the stars. It's like the numbers on the clock. They never move. They just, the stars are, are always in the same place. Then you have the representation of the sun, which is going around and the moon, which is going around. Well, you have them both to meet up in the gate. You have a new month to start. That's how it starts. Let's look over at Enoch and see what it says. So let's come to the next chapter, chapter 73, where we learn about the inferior luminary, which is the moon. Now we see here that it's talking about the moon is it starts talking about months but notice what it says here in verse 5 at that time it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month so what this is saying is just like google told us over here is you know the new moon is dark it's it's not full like the appointed time and the one in june was on june the 18th at 12 37 so we're looking here so we have june the 18th but notice that the gate the window doesn't start until june the 20th so this new moon would have had to have fell after june the 20th to be considered in the next gate so this one actually came early and fell here 
So now you understand why Enoch wrote it this way and didn't say months or months, but said gates, because now you have two moons in the same gate. And then you have the 0% moon on July the 17th. This time, let's go to our channel and look what we reported. That's at youtube.com forward slash in the fight. But anyway, in our community section, we give the new moon reports and the last one was on July the 18th. But that's when it was actually sighted. This moon was sighted on July the 18th. So when we put that on our sundial when that new moon when we had the convergence on our sundial the sun the moon and the stars they would have lined up in that gate that was the beginning of the fourth month not the beginning of the fifth month but the beginning of the fourth month because this moon fell back here in this gate you had these two moons in the same gate that was your 13th month that's why we have 13 months in some years because you have two moons that pop up in the same gate well this occurred in the sixth gate where you had two moons in that gate so now that we get to august the 17th in the year 2023 we are looking at the beginning of the fifth month one two three four five six moons have passed but we have to wait on the representation of the sun to converge in the gate. And they only meet up one time. So that is the beginning of the fifth month. We just are now starting the beginning of the fifth month. Somebody asked me, you know, all about, you know, the fast of the fifth month. And you notice I said nothing is because I don't know. I don't want to confuse anybody, you know, putting out videos about you know, the fast of the fifth month. So we'll be doing that this time because we are now entering the fifth month and we can we can look it up. You have the um, day will begin on the 17th at sunset. That's when we'll blow the trumpets is when a new month will begin. And then we'll start counting. Looking for days like the seventh of the fifth month, which would be associated with King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, you guys might want to check out the videos we did um, with the Bible prophecies um, that came out of this. You know, Jacob's trouble has ended videos. Um, that's serious stuff, guys. You got to take advantage of it. You got to take advantage of this new era that we're in. You know, Jacob is not in any trouble anymore. This will also be associated with numbers uh, 33 and 38. Um, I'll save that one and do a video on it. Um, praise our Father in heaven. He allowed it to happen. Ezra 7 and 9. But this one is real interesting. Jeremiah 52 and 12, where it's talking about the 10th day of the first month. Because this is, you know, when we're talking about the fall of Babylon and all of that. So this is what they call the 10th of Av. That day will be the 26th of August this year. That will be the 10th of Av. That was that black moon. That's referred to as the black moon. The moon basically saying that it doesn't exist. So it says it occurs every once every 33 months. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. This is coming from space.com. But anyway, so there you have it. This is important because, you know, a lot of people in air will start to do their fall uh, celebrations with the next moon, putting them up a month early. Um, I don't know if it's a problem doing two feast days in a year, but those who don't do it uh, with the moon after the day of remembrance will be in trouble. That's why it is a day of remembrance so that your calendar don't get offline like the book of Jubilee told us that it would. But these days of remembrance fall when you have the new moon after September the 18th. Let me say that again. When you have the convergence of the sun, the moon, and the stars. When you have the new moon after September the 18th. We will be at the Day of Remembrance. The Memorial of Blowing the Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah as the Jewish people like to call it. That will all occur after September the 18th. You'll have to go out and see that moon. And of course we'll have Tabernacles. Like always. Tabernacles is always in October. Always. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. If you got anything out of it, go ahead and hit the like button, please. If you didn't, hit the dislike button.
Thank you, and let me know why in the comments section. I'll try to do better, and I'll see you down there. Shalom.